Greetings, history lovers. Professor Philip Travis here, History Changes YouTube channel. I'm here in the Roman Forum, the center of Roman politics, of governance and authority in Roman history. It's a ruin today. In fact, um, for many years, much of this site was actually buried in silt and mud. The way this place would have looked years ago when the likes of Julius Caesar or Augustus Caesar or the great Emperor Hadrian were here uh, would just stun you beyond belief. Um, it's almost impossible to understand how such majestic palaces like the Palace of, of Nero and the Domus Aurea, which is that direction over there, it's, today it's buried in earth. It's hard to imagine how such stunning and incredible building achievements could be rendered to a little more than ruins in some 2,000 years or so. This video I'm making for us to think as Americans about this big question is, is the United States today in a state of decline? And I can't give you the answer for that, but I can tell you that we can look to the story and the legacy of Rome for a few little lessons of history. So why did Rome decline and ultimately collapse. And there are some obvious reasons, um, you know, the Germanic invasions, there was of course the Antonin Plague, there were economic problems. But what were the root reasons? So one of the root reasons was the decline of representative government and its replacement with authoritarianism. Why is that a root cause? The reason that's a root cause is because if you have an authoritarian government, a monarchy, if you will, an emperor, and you have a very good emperor, then that can render itself to a strong and stable state. But when leadership declines, when you have corruption, and remember, when you have leaders with tremendous power, it really caters to corruption. Authoritarian lends itself to corruption in politics, which then lends itself to apathy and self-interest on the part of the population. In Rome, we saw that. You saw increasingly corrupt emperors, particularly after the period of the five good emperors, which ended with Marcus Aurelius. And increasingly a development, not only with leaders, but also with the people of self-interestedness in society. No longer interested in Romanness and Roman society, but more interested just in the individual. Increasing self-interestedness in society and connected to that corruption in politics and increasing apathy of citizens towards political leaders. Another factor in the decline of Rome is overexpansion and militarization of the political system. Now, why is this problematic? I mean, remember, when Rome was a republic, when Rome was a republic, the military wasn't even allowed inside the walls of Rome. When Rome was an empire, the government was really militarized in a lot of ways. Why is that a problem? Well, it's a problem in part because then the military becomes involved in politics. In Rome, numerous times, there were, there were assassinations and civil strife which pitted military figures at the centerpiece of Roman politics, engaging in a myriad of assassinations. This is problematic for a number of reasons, obviously from the standpoint of a democratic society, but also it strains the economics of a society. As Rome expanded more and more, it required more and more wealth to pay soldiers, to maintain a huge realm. Oftentimes, because you couldn't just create money, oftentimes that meant you had to conquer more places to fund this excessive expansiveness. Eventually, the military itself is strained thin. It declines and it's unable to defend against assaults from uh, Germanic forces, barbarians they would have called them. So a loss of representative government I think was central to it, connected to a loss of, of representative government, a militarization of the political system. Connected to both of those you have economic decline, an increased self-interestedness in society, a growth in political corruption, which happens over a period of, of, of decades and centuries. Now then you might ask yourself the question, well, why didn't the Roman people stop this? Why did they not hold on? And of course, we know Rome's not a democracy. It's a limited representative government, but it was a representative government during the era of the Republic. Why didn't they stop this? Why didn't they hold on to this? Why didn't they say, hey, we don't want to go this route. And one of the reasons, there's kind of three reasons for this. The first reason is distraction. Romans were distracted by civil war 
and also entertainment. So leading up to the assassination of Julius Caesar, which this is in the Forum, he wasn't assassinated in the Forum, he was assassinated on the way to the Forum. Um, but Julius Caesar, his assassination came in the, in the period of a, of a great significant age of civil strife and war that Rome had been undertaking for, for, for quite some time. So the Roman people are distracted by this. When you have an emperor like Augustus who comes to power, during the period of the Flavians after the Julio Claudians and the five good Julio Claudians and the five good emperors, people were distracted. They were intentionally kept distracted. You can't see it, but that way is the Roman Colosseum, a centerpiece of distraction for the people of Rome. Over the hill this way is the Circus Maximus chariot racing, a distraction for the, for the people of Rome. Authoritarians were very, very, authoritarian leaders like Augustus Caesar were also very savvy to ensure that people did not understand what was happening to their state. When Augustus became really a total emperor in the state of Rome, uh, most Romans wouldn't have even understood that that had happened. The Roman government system was incredibly complex, intentionally so. And so Augustus really took away representative government, but kept the shadow of it there. And so the people of Rome were never really fully aware at the time to be able to prevent this. And then as you have the development of populist type of leaders, the appeal to the people, um, and Rome subsequently declines. So to reiterate, I think lessons for the decline of Rome, apathy on the people, growth of self-interest amongst the people and the politicians, the demise of representative government and authoritarianism contributing to that, contributing to self-interestedness, creating apathy, a view of political corruption in the country, and economic decline associated with a growth of increased militarization and expansion both in the government and abroad.